Hi everyone, welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session on social media strategy. My name is Benedict. I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. Just a bit about myself, I'm, a, I'm an experienced coding specialist and a digital skills trainer, as well as having a background in the digital creative industry and worked in the sector for over 20 years. I would also like to introduce our amazing moderator, Glenn. Glenn is also a Google Digital Garage coach and will be interacting with you and answering just about all of your questions via the instant uh, chat to the right. You can identify the moderator by his name, as, um, of course, Glenn, as, a, as well as a little blue spanner next to his name. All right, now, just before we start, I just want to call out a few things to help you today. Firstly, if you are having any trouble viewing the webinar at any point, please do try refreshing your page. If you would like to join the instant chat today, and please do, it's a great opportunity to interact with us, you do need a YouTube account, which you can very easily set up by clicking on the box on the right there. Now, we will be pausing throughout the session, um, and Glenn will hopefully kindly pass on some of the questions across to me um, to answer. So please do feel free to fire away with your questions throughout. Just to let you know, we are running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of a broader offering of courses. If you'd like to check out our schedule of upcoming webinars, uh, training, please see the information on this in the description below, which links you through to our website. Okay, now having a look at social media strategy. Now, maybe you're interested in working social media, maybe you're already set up with social media, or maybe you're in a small to medium business considering starting social channels for your business. So let's have a look at what are the key skills to help you land, particularly the, the side with social media strategy. Let's have a look. So today we're going to have a look at these three main points. Firstly, using social media to help grow a business. Second one, build a social media strategy. And then thirdly, learn some tips and look at some tools. So those are the three um, three areas that we are covering in the session today. All right. Just before I get started, um, I want to quickly welcome all the people here who are joining us. It's wonderful from different parts of the world. We've got Melissa Beth Villa uh, from the Philippines. Welcome. Uh, uh, Sri Lekha uh, Rajesh uh, from India. Welcome. Um, welcome, Mohammed and Ronnie uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, and then also Non. Uh, hello from Portsmouth, England. Um, Megan uh, Johnson, hello from Manchester. Uh, Hadi Samad, um, welcome. And then we've got Erin from Turkey um, and Hadi and Webdev. Welcome, welcome everyone who are here. And oh, we've got uh, Louis from Florida. <laughs> this is great. We've got Pilek from Thailand, uh, Leah from Indonesia. Um, let me see now. And Varavara. I can't know I'm pronouncing this correctly, from Moldova, excellent. Um, and Dumi from Sri Lanka. Wow, this is great. I'm sure there's many more of you. So all of those I've missed up, my apologies, but it's great uh, to have all of you here at this talk. It's a great opportunity. Now, and also we've got, just to quickly put in here, Kwadir um, from Pakistan and Patiz from the Philippines. Excellent. Gosh, Jersey from Albania. Wow, this is fabulous. Um, so the next point I'm going to make um, is this. Now, there is opportunity for free one to one uh, mentoring available from Google. At present, I'm afraid it's only the UK because it's so fascinating. All these different countries that you're coming from. Sadly, at the moment, it's only in the United Kingdom. Hopefully, eventually, over time, this will develop and expand. So it's largely if you work for a small business or charity in the United Kingdom, and uh, there is the g.co forward slash UK um, mentoring, uh, Glenn the, there will kindly provide you the link there to help you. Um, that is only though for the UK um, at present. Hopefully eventually this will expand. 
Um, but it's a great opportunity because, um, you know, it's completely free. This is a very important thing. And, you know, you, you can really help you on one to one on a range of dig digital skills where you may need support from building a strategy to finding more customers online. So it's a great opportunity. So let us now get started. So how social media can help grow a business. Let us examine this one first. Welcome video. Hello to you too. OK, so um, your customers live on social media, particularly nowadays. There are 44 million active social media users in the United Kingdom. And actually, this was a little bit of time ago when this last stat was taken. So there's even more now, I believe, especially with the lockdown. One hour, 54 minutes average daily use of social media on any device. Very true. Um, I feel with my children is much longer, but yes, that's the average, the general average daily use. Again, a little bit of time ago, so things will have got more and more towards the side of social media, particularly because social media is great for communicating and that kind of thing. Um, there's a couple of things. YouTube and Facebook are by far the most popular platforms among UK adults online. Um, although Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram and Snapchat are often mentioned in mainstream, uh, their use remains relatively contained among UK adults online. Um, and then the stickiest platforms are, according to these stats, Facebook, 59% of UK adults online use it daily, WhatsApp, 28% and YouTube, 27%. It's often to do with communication, how much communication or what they manage to find there, which really interests them. And of course, you've got to make sure that you're doing it for the right kind of social media for your company, which is appropriate for your company. OK, so if you're considering starting social media for your company um, or you need to persuade your manager for why it could be a good fit, here are some of the values it can actually add. All right, so reaching new audiences, okay, with up to 84% of the just the UK population on some social media platforms, it makes a good place to connect with new customers. That said, it, it's not free and often requires investment in order to effectively reach the right audience. This is really when you're using um, social media marketing, when you're boosting the different posts, for example, for actually making sure you're getting to, through to them. Um, not just your followers. Then there's new business opportunities. You know, it gives you opportunity to connect with customers in different ways, such as facilitating competitions uh, in different things which are interactive, which really uh, gets people involved as well. Then the ability to highly target demographics, you know, from age to gender to lifestyle preferences and interests, you can really micro-target a range of different audiences with great, great detail or granularity, as we call it. Then there's, um, you can build relationships and networks, you know, it can really help you to find influences around certain subject matters as well. Um, so think about niche audience, even though they are fundamentally free, you may need to pay to reach specific customers. This is a thing. All right, so that's just to get you started with some of the different things um, for generating more sales. All right. Now, adding value to your brand, you can use social media for adding value. Let's have a look at a couple of the different things. So raising customer service levels. It's, a, it's a, such a form of communication, you know, they can see how much they're being respected or, you know, communicated with and everything on the social media. And so it can raise the customer service levels, particularly, particularly because if you, if you take on the feedback and everything and use it as well, the big thing is, it's a, it's a two way conversation. You, you're chatting with someone almost. <laughs> um, so it is a two way conversation. By the way, we deal with um, uh, positive and negative um, uh, feedback and how to deal best with negative in writing for social media. That's another uh, talk we have recommended. And then, of course, you're showing a new side to your business that they haven't seen before, a more personal side, more, you know, one they can communicate with often. And then, of course, you can be building your own community, which is so important. And the other thing is, you know, 
it can be really helpful for working out your unique selling point as well by comparing yourself to different competitors as well. All right, improve your marketing. A couple of the different things here. You can, it can help you get noticed on search because don't forget, of course, obviously search is not just for websites. It can be for social media as well. You know, the different things could be different posts, could be different articles and everything you've got there. You can attract more people to your site because the point is if they're going onto the social media and you've got a website, you could have a link across to there. So they could be reading a lot of things or they could be communicating with you and then going across to your, your main official website, wherever it might be. And it can gain valuable customer insights because you can learn so much. We always talk about you've got to know your audience and of course it's so important knowing your audience. So you can you can learn so much about your customers. And of course, you can keep an eye on competitors. Now competitors always often can seem quite negative. It's not only negative, you can learn from them the different forms, the different things that they're using, things that are successful and that kind of thing, as well as finding out your unique selling point, what you offer that others don't. So there's a lot you can... And of course, obviously, you know, you, you can learn a lot from that. Okay. Um, so ask yourself, are your posts on social media driving people to my website? Now, with that kind of question, you know, there are ways of finding out if your social media is actually driving people to your website. I don't know if you've ever heard of Google Analytics. If you've got Google Analytics, which is totally free, you can get a lot of feedback on what is actually how people are finding a website. Is it with um, search engine and what keywords particularly, um, you know, or is it things like um, social media? They've read something, they read a post and they click across and they go across there. So, yeah, so you can find this information out. Who are my most... Inf oh, the other thing is, sorry, just before I continue, the other side is social media always have... You've always got analytics as well, often called insights or analytics. And so all social media can give you some kind of feedback as well on how, what people are using it, how, people are, how many people are finding it, all that kind of side. So who are my most influential followers? very important. Ask yourself who they are, okay? Is, are there ways you could actually get advocates with, with your brand, for example? Could you, could you speak to them? Could you communicate with them? Could you get things to assist to get a partnership or something like that? What kind of updates should I post? All right. One of the biggest things here is of course, you find out from doing it and then you find out, I mean, obviously you plan ahead, plan ahead. The more you plan, the less time it'll take you in the long term. Once you've done all the different updates, you know, have a look, see what people are reacting to, what people like, what people don't, that kind of side. And when is the best time to engage with my audience? Now, with a lot of different social media, you can get that feedback, which is really, really useful. Okay. So um, it's a very useful thing to use. All right. And remember, attention spans are, sorry, yes, attention spans are very, very short. Of course, there is lots of competition out there competing against you. And of course, it's not always free. You know, if you're boosting a post, for example, you know, and once it's public, this is, this is kind of warning. <laughs> You know, public relations disasters where, you know, when it when it is actually public, it is public and everyone can see it. So just be careful that you're calm and everything, even with a really negative review and everything. And that, you know, that kind of side. <laughs> so just to help you with a couple of the different things. All right. Um, we're actually doing quite well on time. Um, also, another thing is think about how you scroll. What is... You know, what is enough to stop your thumb as it scrolls? That kind of thing. So it's got to be something really capturing. Um, and of course, we are always competing. Of course, make sure, you know, you're doing well to keep up with the others. And it's not as easy as just posting on social, try dedicating your resource. So with all different, if you are boosting a post or that kind of thing, or you're advertising, 
you can always set a budget, you can always set a limit to it, how much you're going to spend. All right, on to pausing for questions. I gather there are no questions as of yet. Okay. Um, uh, but never mind. I shall move forward, but don't forget if there are any questions, do put them to, of course, Glenn will, of course, will be answering all of these questions and it's been quite busy, I can see. Um, so, but do ask the questions. We're here, I mean, obviously, to help you with the social media side today, the social media strategy. Um, I mean, obviously, it can get very, very specific. It gets too specific to your particular company. Obviously, we can only go so far. But, you know, do ask questions if you're getting, getting to know some of these different sides. All right. Um, let us move now on to how to build a social media strategy. All right. Building of a social media strategy. All right. Um, the most important thing you've got to make the most the opportunity that social media can actually give to your business and you really need to create a strategy and make use of your insights available to really get everything into working um, and we'll discuss what the key steps to building a strategy and what are the metrics to look out for when tracking your efforts all right let's get started with this one um Okay, um, all right, let us begin. So, <laughs> you've got to avoid looking down at the questions and ready to answer them, but I'm sure Glenn will be there to answer them all. So, five steps to creating a social media strategy. I did say to you before, I did warn you before, we always start with audience. You need to know your audience as much as possible. Sometimes it can be very difficult defining your audience. Who are your audience? But I'll come to them later because we're going to go into each of these different details in more detail. Sorry, each of these points in more detail. So it's going to be audience, business goals, you know, set your goals, you know, pick your platforms, you know, your social platforms, and then find your social voice. So we've got, for example, tone of voice, that kind of thing. And then decide what 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 is success in this context what are you defining as success in, in this particular thing that you're working on decide what success looks like all right so these are the five steps to creating your social media strategy i'm going to go through each of these different points in turn all right let us begin don't forget um just before i continue don't forget please that um, when this has finished, you have access to this up to 24 hours after I finish giving the talk. You have an opportunity to go back if there's anything you missed, if there's anything you want to look through and everything. And you can get it with the, the chat on the side, which is really useful. Um, but it's only up to 24 hours, so of course, you've got to fit it within that time. But it's useful. I mean... Don't, I wouldn't recommend you go back now because obviously you want to you want to get all the information now. You want to interact with us now. So, you know, you don't you don't want to do it for that reason. But when it's all finished, you can go back up to 20 uh, tw up to 24 hours after. All right. And of course, I hope you're all there with a pencil. Uh, I prefer pencil or pen writing down notes on all these different points to help you um, to put all these different things into into action. All right. So step one, define your audience. All right. So who are they? What are they into? Who or what influences them? When are they usually online? And which social media do they use? So it's trying to get these details as clear as possible to really get them you know, I really, you know, if you start asking yourself these questions, gradually you'll start to build up this consensus of the different things. And I really do recommend you write some of these questions down to remind yourself. Because the point is, you've got to really get thinking about this, you know, go through all these different things. Um, and of course, it can vary on different demographics as well, different parts of the world, you know which is very important, you've got to take into context as well. Um, and also, uh, you, as I said already, you've got Google Analytics, which can help you. If you're new to a business and you don't have a website yet, you can find out as much as possible from your competitors. Um, if you set up already and you've dealt with clients, but you haven't really set up so much on the internet, that's absolutely fine. 
take down notes from about the persona, you know, you build up a kind of persona of um, sort of representative, as it were, a sort of generalization and sort of a averaged out sort of person who is your main client. I mean, obviously, you can have many different divisions and everything, different kinds of people, but your main client are the, the biggest number of clients. You know, you could sort of define that down to get it as clear as possible to really work out who you're communicating with. All right. Um, all right. Yes, absolutely. Research, very important. So how to define your audience? Um, speak to real people to understand their needs and interests. Can't underline that enough. Because, of course, speaking to people, finding out from them is the best thing. It's a little bit like when you're building up different blogs. You find out what kind of questions they're going to ask you. You know, that can help a lot. But the point is, you can get to know them so much if you're speaking to the real people to understand their needs and interests. And often you can do that through social media as well, or you can observe different different ones, different makes and everything who are communicating with them. And you can find out a lot about the audience. But yeah, speaking to real people, you know, you or your staff might engage with customers every day. So it's it might be the best moment to learn more about your customers, their needs and which platforms they engage with. Then, of course, as I mentioned, identifying groups and segments that can be, you know, most attracted to your offering as well. So once you've got all this information, make sure you're able to segment this, which means split them up into groups that you can now focus your marketing efforts around. OK. And then, of course, building an online survey, finding an easy way to collect this information can often be challenging collect all of the, this data. So you can create a simple online feedback survey using Google Forms or uh, SurveyMonkey, for example, uh, to collect that valuable data. Okay, that's to help you. So you're building it up to get to know them more and more. You can't know them too well. That's the whole point. There's so much you can get from these different things. This is just a starting point, just to get you started with your strategies, the different steps you must take. Very, very important. All right. OK, so now we've got define your audience. Let's move on to the next point. So find your insights from platforms. Actually, no, we haven't quite finished that one yet. So find your insights from platforms. So we've got different things here. Um, over here, you've got this graph over here. Whoa does go a bit dark. In fact, let me just magnify it a little bit. So you've got that male, female, and you've got the dates, and you've got particularly, um, oh no, sorry, that's age, 26 to 35. Um, I think that's um, one particular graph you've got there. Then you've got age and gender. This is Facebook. Um, and you've got the age, and then you've got the gender. Um, so there's different things you can use with that information, audience engagement, which is really useful. Um, so you've got a screenshot of Google marketing platform behavior, you know, in the demographic report. So all of this information, it's largely, you see, you've got a, you're getting a lot of information coming through. It's largely how to interpret, how to use this information, how to find out about. I mean, already we've got, for example, here, um, these. this particular one is 24 to 34 is the main client base, and here as well, 36, sorry, 35 to 44. And it's um, more, more female than male there, generally speaking, there. Uh, so there's all this information, you know, you can find out information about people who visit your website it helps us understand our customers and can make your marketing material much more relevant. This is a big thing. All right. OK. Step two. Let's move on to step two now. Defining your goals. So how do you translate your business goals? Now, business goals, we think of the context of brick and mortar business, kind of like real world 
business goals into social media goals or so you know so how are you going to use your channels as a tool to sort of for example building rapport networking with influencers find branch advocates so define your goals give better customer service for example what the ways the different things you can be doing with that ways you can do that so you're setting your goals grow brand awareness so people are more and more aware of get to get used to it get accustomed one of the things often with advertising is return on investment you need to check whether there's return on investment but often what can be a bit confusing is there might not be a return on investment for a bit of time but it's still investment to the extent that people are seeing you and gradually people might be warming to you or getting familiar with your particular brand often images often work very well so it's growing the brand awareness certainly in social media you can be using this then of course you're using generate more sales okay this could be some of the different goals get more people on your website okay um, and then connect with influencers so these are just some examples for defining your goals okay so what we recommend once you've got all these different goals down which i'm sure i don't want to interrupt you but i'm sure you're in the process of doing right now good um once you once you've done all of that you know written down several social media goals set one social media goal okay De define what is the most important okay so discover what the goal is and how it helps your business define identify now this is uh what's called the double diamond framework to problem solving okay uh, so the double diamond so you've got discover define develop and deliver so we've got discover what the goal is and how it helps your business define identify any barriers develop list what you need to actually achieve the goal and deliver work out how to mitigate how to get around those particular challenges or not obstacles no challenges in the way so all of those different things to help you so you choose one social media goal and put it through the double diamond framework okay so i'll give you a bit of a chance to do that so that's discovering what the goal is and how it helps your business define identify any barriers develop list what you need to achieve the goal now my, there might be some question marks at the moment with that that's absolutely fine but you will go out and find it won't you and then deliver work out how to mitigate how to get around those particular problems okay um step three all right so we've done step one step two we've defined your audience you've set your goals now we're going to step three which is choose channels carefully all right now are you a business that is selling to customers the general public or to other businesses is it a b2b as, as it's called or is it to b2c business to customers so each channel will require investment time and money in order to optimize results and i know time one has the least of it's a common misconception that it's free but but it's not you know don't just be on all for the sake of it it won't add much value but you know will add a lot of extra work so you know you'll probably you know they will probably live on facebook snapchat whatsapp it's whatever just consider what is the most appropriate way for them to find you the most appropriate so which channels are right for you now this can depend on business to business business to customer um all right for example i'm going to give you an example here so um business to business uh, knowledge based for example slide share um, interior designs fashion in uh, instagram business to business are still consumers so they will still be using those platforms but can be creative as a way we approach and ensure the timing is right this is a big thing you see I know you might be going for business and i understand you're going for business but within that business there are people <laughs> there are customers who are you know 
who are represent customers in the context of the business. But anyway, so I'm going to go through these different ones, but we recommend that you start with one and then gradually work up. You know, don't overstress yourself. Try and make sure that you can do a good job with what you've got, which is the first one. And then gradually after time, you, you can maybe start to expand. So we're going to run through some of the channels now. All right. Twitter. All right. Now, Twitter, just by the name almost, it's kind of is so well known for quick fire conversations. Uh, particularly public relations tool is often used as well. So if you're going to use Twitter, create a professional looking profile, header, image and at name, get noticed and join conversations by using relevant hashtags. OK, ask questions and run polls. OK, um, retweet and engage with content uh, with content your customers would like and also use pinned tweets as well to display important messages, offers and that kind of thing. The big thing is, of course, Twitter. If a lot of your clients are on Twitter, great stuff. You can be using that. Um, we've got Dollar Shave uh, Club. OK, so here is a particular tone. This is going to be um, generally men. <laughs> so simply use of polls to reinforce their products, you know, easy and quick to make. So for example, we've got here, how often do you change your DSC blade? No right answers here, folks. Well, that's not true, but that's what this is about. So every single shave uh, once a week, once a month, I'm a fan of razor burn <laughs> kind of thing. So, of course, you're running the different things. So you, the people are interacting, they're taking part and everything. OK, let's have a look at Facebook. Now, Facebook helps customers particularly find you and see what your business is particularly about. Um, it is a visual channel. So how do you make that thumb stop on your v images, particularly? Um, so link it to your main website, of course, you know, add opening hours, contact details, call to action, you know, button, very important. So we've got um, and then use GIFs and videos as well. And we've got here the example proper tasty, very attractive, especially when you're hungry like I'm getting to be. Um, and of course, it is very visual, as I was saying before. So this is certainly something which might stop the thumb scrolling. Um, so as fast, quick, indulgent recipes, videos, use of popular ingredients makes the videos viral as well. And tapping into trend for videos and culture of tagging friends in content on Facebook as well. So that's Facebook. Often it's a place of communication, often it's a place of families, often it's a place with, you know, birthdays and that kind of thing. You often see them on Facebook. It's not not sort of be all end all, but you often do see it there. All right. OK, Instagram. Now, of course, Instagram image, photos, videos, that particularly. So, of course, use your photo caption to tell a story and get people interested. Go. Go easy on your hashtags, you know, follow influencers, brands of people, you know, consistent brand element in every image. OK, now we talk about that a little bit in more detail in writing for social media. So I do recommend it. Do book for that. Um, but we talk about, yeah, so the brand element. So, you know, make sure you're consistent with it. Also, so people can recognize it as well. And they got kind of warm to your particular brand element as well. They get to know who you are. They want to know. So your brand element can bring that out as well. So high quality, consistent colors, very important. And then showcasing, you know, your products in creative ways. Um, all right. So there's some of the different things. Instagram, LinkedIn. All right, so this is probably the best known for recruitment network connecting. Often people think of LinkedIn as the place of their CV in some ways, because, of course, if you started well enough in advance, I mean, obviously, if you haven't, just start now, please. And then, of course, people will often check you out on LinkedIn. That's what people will see. They will check out your website, then they'll check you out on LinkedIn because they want to see, they want to know more. So, um, you know, personal company page, 
there is personal, there is company page. If it's your business is very small and it's just you, uh, this is just my own suggestion. Test, test it out by all means. Of course, you're gonna have the company page and everything, but often it's uh, people will tend to go more for the person they want to know. If there's just one person behind it, they want to know that particular person. And then encourage your employees to become brand advocates, make your company page search engine friendly. Um, so making sure that it kind of ticks all the boxes with the search engine, so to make sure this nice and smooth, so it's, yeah. Um, generate interest by creating a special showcase pages, product news, thought leadership. Um, uh, encourage your customers, uh, you know, as a first steps, you know, LinkedIn comes up first on Google with name search. This is a big thing, you see. It's heavily tied. So it doesn't have to be for recruitment, doesn't have to be taking from different companies, but it can be people checking out. Let me, I might be buying from this company. Let me see the person. And what is interesting as well with LinkedIn is your reviews. Um, people can click on the review link and it takes them directly to the person who wrote that review. And then they can, so they can check out, it gives them more verification with it. They can, they're taken to that person and then they can check that person out and then they click on that link and then they're taken. So all of these things get, that help the person get to know you. So keep that in mind. Um, preferably have posts as well for uh, you know with pieces of content um you know wide range of content that is open to anyone uh you know um all right okay i think i'll move on from that so that is one particularly useful for particularly business to business but it's also for all the different companies they will often check you out to find out more about the company uh yeah that they're going to be buying from YouTube. All right. Now, this is the second biggest search engine in the world is actually for for video videos, actually people searching for videos. It's a great platform to be discovered online. I don't know about you, but I do search a lot of different things on YouTube for explanations for different things. Um, very, very important. Also, don't forget with social media, um, a lot of people will go online to find different solutions or answer different questions. Um, I'll give you an example. I, ha I have a 2D, 3D and whiteboard animation company and um, I got taken on by one of the top three consultancy companies. And I used a very useful question they asked right at the beginning, which was 2D or 3D animation for your company. Which one would be best for this particular client they were having? So I put that online and that was my most read blog. Um, and of course that's blog, but don't forget this overlaps onto videos as well. People will go onto videos to, to answer particular questions. Obviously they will go on the internet to buy. Yes, agreed. But they go on YouTube, for example, to find out more, to answer questions, to, to um, do research into different things. And the more you come across as the expert, because with this one, with the top three consultancy companies, they, they called me, uh, they wanted to know 2D, 3D. So I gave them, I gave them feedback, the pros and cons of 2D, 3D, and then also whiteboard animation, which my company specialized in. They said, thank you very much. I said, no problem at all. And then five or six hours later, they called me back and they wanted to take on my company, partly because I provided that information and with that, I knew what I was talking about. Therefore, they could see that. Therefore, you become the expert indirectly through the different things with YouTube. So, you know, you can be a thought leader as well, as well as just showing that you can, but you can be helping people with all sorts of different things within your particular area that you, that your business is in. So um, I'd rec highly recommend that, that you can use it as well. And um, think about uh, creating useful videos for your audience and look for potential collaborators to help grow your channel as well. Um, there is um, YouTube Creator Academy. No, there isn't. There's, <laughs> sorry, YouTube. Yes, I think, is it, is it called that? Glenn, help me out there. Um, I think it's called YouTube, what's it called again? We're talking about so many different things. 
Um, but there is a link that Glenn can provide you with there um, just to get started and get to know um, get to know about YouTube and everything to help you with the different sides. And also, of course, look at your different competitors and everything. That can help your masses. All right, let me move on from YouTube. So step four. So we've looked at the different um, the different forms of social media. You can take your pick and everything. There are other, so other forms of social media, as we know, of course, TikTok and all the rest. But, you know, it's to work out what's best for your company. And there are some, for example, who a T-shirt company, I think, or top company, and they, they did really well on TikTok. It all depends according to your company and your, your clients. So step four, your brand's social voice. Very important. So, you know, think about setting your own business excuse me, guidelines or rules of how your business will communicate on social media. Communicate, of course, if you've got, have you got, if you've got staff within your company, communicate, they discuss that, come to uh, decisions about these different things. Or if you want to set the rules as manager, okay, fine. You know, there are a few elements of the brand guidelines to be aware of. Logo, for example, tone of voice, images, you know, all of these different things to be consistent as well. Now, if you're hiring someone to run your social campaigns, you can ensure they follow these guidelines and keep your brand tone consistent. Very, very important. And then also use handy image creation software such as Canva, you know, Canva, uh, to create images that fit your brand as well. All right, um, so there's, you know, logo, fonts and colors, personality do's and don'ts yes very very important especially if you're hiring someone and then you know your style of your images keep consistent work out what's the best style and all that kind of side okay excellent i can see some questions coming up wow excellent so now as a brand of course your voice may adopt a particular tone that resonates well with your customers now make sure Anyone who is posting on your behalf is able to adhere to keep to this particular tone so the audience can gain familiarity with this. They think, who's this? Oh, it sounds completely different. So, you know, is your tone, for example, friendly or provocative? Think about how your customer would react to said tone. Is your tone fun or serious? Um, think about how your customer would react to said tone. You know, is your tone formal, formal or casual? All of these different things, and how how would your customer feel about this? What works best for you? And of course, you don't have to have one tone of voice. You can change it, of course, um, but it's kind of working out your sort of almost like your character as a company and what you stand for and all those different things. Very, very important. Um, you and you can actually set some principles to stick and then adjust the turn according to the type of content and platform. Now, people love a glimpse of what's going on. This is another great thing. So for news, you might be very formal, you know, um, but, you know, you could be showing the different things of what's going on behind, which people love. Um, uh, whereas a relatable how-to video, you, you know, you might be a little bit more relaxed in different sites. Just some ideas. Now, we've got a case study here. This, uh, the This Girl campaign. Now, campaign was huge on social media and continues to be so. I think under these gloves is a beautiful manicure. I also know the offside rule, sweating like a pig, feeling like a fox. It's kind of, it's challenging. It's very challenging of, you know, sort of set role that women often have to sort of put into. But it's kind of the freedom to break away and I can do these, I can do these different things and I'm absolutely fine with it. So it's quite a sort of provocative tone and other thing. So which different channels do you think they could use with these different sides, you know? And how do you think the choices of tone and platform influences the success of the campaign? These are questions, they're not rhetorical questions, but I'm asking you, think about them, maybe research them a little bit as different ideas. This is one particular tack, one particular idea, one particular way of dealing with it that they came up with. It's just one which worked really well. 
Um, it's quite a challenging, provocative one and everything, but it's, it's an example um, and it did extremely well. So just an idea, just an example, a case study, just to get your brain cells going with these different ones. Um, absolutely. Um, yes, that's Glenn. Yes, it's very strong and very effective. Absolutely. Step five, defining success. Now, don't get distracted by the wrong numbers. Um, particularly with something like Google Analytics, there are so many numbers, it can end up like a rabbit's warren. <laughs> it's very important. What was your goal? Okay, the number of followers can be a distraction. So a lot of people look at followers, but can can we actually measure engagement? Uh, you know, but think, can we measure how people are taking up thinking of uh, talking about you online? So there's different things. Which ones are you actually using? Um, so you got to determine what your success is and how you can tell. One of the different tools that you can use, of course, is Google Analytics that you can use for feedback. There's analytics with all the different social media. You can use those. You can use both, of course, they're all free uh, to help you give feedback to see if it's working or not. So it could be um, growth in sales, traffic, influencers, improvement in customer service, calls answered, star rating. And of course, you need all of these things down with metrics and, you know, the numbers of all these different things. Increase in brand awareness, reach and number of mentions, you know. And then, all right, where organic reach can only take you so far, you know, it's very easy to pay a little extra to reach more customers. And it doesn't have to be expensive, you know, um, because you can always set a budget on how much you're spending. So it can be more reach and audience. You can really hone it down to who you're targeting. And it can be important across all platforms. And especially if your growth is more sales and growth, particularly. All right. Um, a few platforms make it difficult to gain reach without paying for it, and, you know. So works really well if your goal is, you know, which I've said already. So all of those different things. So consider the actual paying side. And if you are willing, even if it's out for a little time, people have, some people have seen it. Some people will have uh, clocked onto it a little bit. All right. Bringing everything together. Let's go through all of these different points for your strategy. Let's recap. So first of all, defining the audience and how to make things relatable to them. All right. Putting on their shoes, as it were, to work out what, what they're looking for, what really works for them. Then set one business goal and how to mitigate any barriers or challenges, shall we call it. And then um, social platforms, you know, one or more channels. Now, think as well about the tone of voice, the tone of voice, threatening, pleasant, whatever it might be, and potential content for specific channels. And then, you know, what is success? So what is success? <laughs> Not excess, what is success? So you've really got to construct it for some, you know, some of the ideas on defining success or what you want to achieve. So what actually works with that second point, your business goal? Where can you actually see that you have succeeded? And how can you rate it? How can you keep an eye on it? All right. Pausing for questions. And excellent. We've got some questions, which is just fabulous. So, um, okay, uh, I see Glenn's answer them all, but I'll just see if I can enlarge on them a little bit. So, Varvara Blindar, how am I supposed to resist competition being fresh in business? Okay, that's a good one. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the sides I do feel, well, let me, let me take it from this side, Varvara, uh, Varvara um, is once, whilst you're finding out about your competition, you are also finding out more and more about your unique selling point. So that's how, in some ways, you will be fresh in business because obviously you're looking, but you're not copying exactly what they're doing. No, you're coming up with your own ideas, 
which will do well against this competition because it's something which is not appearing with your competitors. Competitors. Hope that helps. <laughs> Be kek. Um, how to start from zero followers? Very good question. It's largely through research. It's checking out all those different places, looking at your competitors. You know, there is a one, define your audience. There is a piece of software as well. Um, I think probably Glenn's given it to you. Um, so all of these things can really help you. Um, okay, Mohammed, I better watch the time too. Uh, I would like to know how to find my competitors and how to analyze their business, please. Search, Mohammed. Go on to search and search those different things on the social media. So just search through that. And then you start to see more and more and more. You know, if you're looking on YouTube, if you're looking on social media, whatever social media you're looking at, you will find them there if, if you go into the search. Hope that helps, Mohammed. Okay, I know, uh, of course, um, Glenn answered the question anyway, but I just thought I'd at least add something to it. So... Um, <laughs> Let me move on to um, tools and best practices. We've got eight minutes left, so I think we're doing all right. So your social channels are often public. So here are some best practices and tips you can use to make sure your strategies succeed. All right, let's go through these. So, so what sort of content should we share? You know, let's think about the types of content you may wish to post. It can differ per platform, but here's some simple starting ideas. All right, announcements, a new product or something like that. That is really great. Another one, non-promotional, behind the scenes. You know, people love a glimpse of what's going on. Try sharing and, and also as well as announcements, but share uh, the behind the scenes to look 360 degree view of the different things. Um, and then also create useful how-to content. That's what people are looking for. That's what I look for often. Uh, run a theme or regular content feed. You know, show your personality and that there is a human behind it. Very important. And remember, don't post the same across all channels. Tweak it around to the different channels to make sure. If you, if you run for time, you haven't got much time, make sure it's slightly different for each of the different platforms. Um, and then don't repeat content again and again, please. Okay. So that's a couple of the different things. Um, product or brand related uh, responses, engaging with a customer influencer, operational job openings, for example, uh, recurring content, seasonal sales, that kind of thing. So let's take a few minutes and list two or three different kinds of things. If I want you to actually write down a couple of the different content that you could actually produce. So consider how you can turn a delighted customer into a loyal social advocate. Um, or how you can actually encourage customers to create a user-generated content. So is there something in the real world that is shareable, you know? An example, uh, Coca-Cola and the name and the names that you had, that person's names on bottles campaign and Starbucks having season cups, for example. Um, there are ways you can encourage your audience to engage with your brand and, you know, how you can actually make the the engagement authentic, relatable and timely. So the big thing is sharing and communicating and, you know, People love the experience side. People want to see if they resonate with you, if they can find out the information, if you, they, you can help them. So tips for sharing content. All right, first, use great graphics. Now, Canva, uh, C-A-N-V-A, thanks, Glenn, for providing the link for that one, and other uh, similar resources makes it easy and affordable to create quality social media graphics. You know, their library of social media layouts are free to use as many times as you like, making it easy to update your social profiles regularly. And you don't have to be a graphical designer to use it. All right, check your grammar. Thank you very much, Glenn. Grammarly. Grammarly actually helps you check all your writing for grammar mistakes and can be added as an extension in your browser. And then manage your social media accounts. You know, it's fair to say keeping up with continual posting and connecting with your customer base can be difficult and incredibly time consuming, 
but it's very, very useful. Now, a piece of software, thank you, Glenn, Hootsuite, is an it's a really useful uh, application for managing social media network channels. That's Hootsuite, often referred to as a social media management system or tool. It, it actually enables you to view multiple streams at once and monitor what customers are saying. Now, one of the most useful features is to schedule posts in advance. I highly recommend you do this because you get your brains working on this over time. And maybe you think over time, oh, no, why don't I think, why don't I do, you know, it really helps. It gets gives your brain time to work on all these different things, your subconscious almost. It really allows you to schedule messages across all your favorite social media platforms in advance as well. It enables you to create a solid social media strategy that encompasses crucial times when postings are most often read as well and get more followers to notice your content. So simply pick the day and time that best suits your needs. You can then view scheduled posts in an easy-to-read ca uh, calendar format. That's uh, all right with Hootsuite. All right. So you've got the knowledge. Now let's see it in action. <laughs> Very, very important. Set goals for a strategy. You know, define the tone of voice uh, for the audience and the content and the style and everything, the way you're coming across to them, what, you're, what, what you stand for, what your company stands for, all of these different things. And it comes across in all your videos and all your different blogs. Um, choose the right platforms to focus on. Start with one and then gradually expand. I mean, you don't have to start with one. You can have several, that's absolutely fine. But just don't sort of have quantity uh, the, uh, the, the lack of, qu of qu quality. In other words, you've got so many, you can't deal with them all. So they're all pretty not good. Rather concentrate on one and really get it really good quality till you eventually can expand to other ones. That's the sort of idea behind it. Okay. Pausing for questions. Okay, so now let me see now. Hadi Samad, let me have a look. If I had to focus on contents and I can't afford a graphic designer, okay, that's absolutely fine. Don't forget you can use things like Canva and everything, which is, which, you know, you can use and there's a lot of free different backdrops and everything you can use. What tools, uh, Canva? <laughs> yes, but especially with someone who doesn't have a graphic design experience. Don't forget, Hadi, with all these different things, use your friends as well. I mean, you know, if you've got a graphic designer who's a friend, speak to them and say, look, I put this together. What do you think of it? You know, get some get some feedback. Um, so what I'd recommend more than anything is use some of these different free things like Canva. You know, you can use a lot of different style. I mean, if you're going really far, you know, you can use something like Affinity but that's expensive and all the rest, but you don't have to go to that length. You can use Canva, it's totally free. So um, just set it up, I'd recommend. Go and speak to your friends and your colleagues and everything and ask them, what do you think? Does this work? And then also when you have launched, have a look, see if it's working or not. Is it because of the content? Is it because of the graphics? All these different signs, okay. All right, thank you very much, Hadi, for that question. And thank you, Varvara, Paikik, and Mohammed, and all the rest of the questions which we're firing away at Glenn. It's great to have all, all of you here interacting. It's wonderful. You're all up from all over the world, which is fabulous. So, um, what are your next steps? Of course, there's a lot to take away. Don't forget, you've got 24 hours after I've finished to go, go back onto this video, any part of it with the, with the chat and everything, and you can see any part of it. All right. Um, if there's any further questions, obviously do fire the way. I'm sure Glenn will be answering them at this point, but make sure you've just noted down at least three things from this talk, three things to get you started. You know, just need something to get you started, get, get the wheels turning. And obviously you can go back, um, if you didn't have a chance to write any of those down. Free one-to-one -one mentoring. Now this is for small business or charity in the UK. My apologies for the uh, other countries and everything at the moment. It's just in the UK. Hopefully eventually this will expand. So sign up for the g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Thank you very much, uh, Glenn, for providing the link there again for all those in the UK. Um, 
Okay, so it's a great opportunity, one to one, you know, speaking to one of us, we can help you and assist you as best we can. Um, so it's a great idea to speak to someone before you're launching these different things. All right. Everyone, thank you for all your questions, all your all your contributions and everything. Um, and taking part in this activity has been absolutely great to have all of you. Um, we are going to wrap up here as we are out of time. I hope that has been a useful dive into social media strategy today. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you are interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, there are a few ways you can continue learning. You know, we are running many more Google Digital Garage webinars in different subjects. If you would like to check out the schedule of webinars, please see the information on this in the description below. There will be different topics available to watch and, you know, we'll be updating the schedule regularly. So that's a great opportunity. The other side is also, if you would like to carry on learning online in your own time, check out Google Digital Garage website for more online training courses. Um, which are available to you 24 seven, I would recommend particularly uh, fundamentals of digital marketing. Okay, so great opportunities there. Okay, I want to thank everyone. Thank you very much, Glenn. You've been fabulous, been fab wonderful. Thank you everyone for taking part today. It's been w wonderful having all of you here. We look forward to welcome you again to another Google Digital Garage training session soon. Thank you.